To start our exploration of optimization, let's look at a fairly straightforward example, which we can use to illustrate some of the concepts. Here we're asked to find two positive real numbers, such that their sum is 15 and their product is as large as possible. Okay, there's a lot of information in this sentence. So we've got two positive real numbers. That means that they have to be greater than zero. Sum refers to addition. So two numbers have to add to give us 15. Product refers to multiplication. So they have to multiply to be a maximum. Large as possible means that we're dealing with a maximum. Let's start by setting up our variables. So we'll let x and y be our um, two positive real numbers. And they both have to be greater than zero. Now let's set up our equations. Well, the sum is 15, so we can say here that x plus y is equal to 15, and we'll call that equation 1. We also know that their product is as large as possible, so let's set up a product function. So product p would equal x times y, I'll use a dot for multiplication, and we'll call that equation number 2. Now before we get into calculus to solve the problem, Let's uh, look at it logically. I'll set up a table where we have our variable x, first number, variable y, our second number. Their sum is x plus y, and their product is x times y. So we'll pick a number greater than z uh, 0 for x, let's say 1. So if their sum is 15, y would have to be 14. So that their sum is 15, and their product, x times y, would be 1 times 14, or 14. And we can keep going. We'll try another number, 2. So this y would have to be 13, so that their sum is 15. And their product, in this case, would be 26. And we'll keep going. 3. y would have to be 12. Their sum is 15. And the product would be 36. What we can see here is that our product is increasing. I've added some more numbers here. Let's keep going. We'll go to 7, and then y would have to be 8. Sum is 15, and the product is 56. Now we can see that our product uh, is actually slowing down as it increases still, but slowing down. Let's just do a couple more. If I went up to 8, that would be 7, 15, and that's similar to, or identical to this one, just in reverse. So that would be 56, etc. So this, if we went on to 9, this would be 6, 15, and 54. Same as this scenario, just opposite, uh, switching the numbers around. Now what we can see is that we're increasing, getting up to a maximum, and then it's starting to decrease again. So it looks like our maximum is going to occur somewhere between 7 and 8. So logic and trial and error can lead us to an answer. Now let's use calculus to get a more precise answer and see and compare the two and see what we get. Okay, coming back to our first equation. Notice we have two variables, x and y. We really want to make them into one variable, so we'll set up a relationship here. We can say from 1 that y would be 15 minus x. Just rearrange that equation. Then we can substitute 15 minus x for into this y in the second equation. And that would leave us with p equals x times 15 minus x. Let's expand that, so we get 15x, we'll distribute the x over the brackets, 15x minus x squared is our product function. By looking at this function, we know that it's a parabola, it opens down. So if we were to do a rough sketch here, we would see that this parabola would look something like this. And we're looking for this critical value here, where the slope would be 0, and this would be a maximum. So to find that value, 
we take the derivative of the product function and we're going to set it equal to zero. Recall that the derivative means the slope of the tangent line at a given point, and we want that slope to be zero right here, so that, that'll tell us that we've reached that maximum value. Okay, let's find the derivative. So p primed would be 15 minus 2x using the sum rule and the power rule. We'll set p equal to zero, and we'll solve for x. So this would give us 2x equals 15 x equals 15 divided by 2, which is 7.5. So x is 7.5. To find y, we're going to substitute it into our first equation, the rearranged form. Let me get rid of this for now so we have some space to work with. So this would be y equals 15 minus 7.5 and y would also therefore be 7.5. Now let's go to our table and see if this makes sense. So we found x to be 7.5, y to be 7.5. If we add those together we get 15, and if we multiply them together we get 56.25. So this makes sense. We're increasing in terms of our product slowing down, we reach 56.25, and then we start to decrease again. So this must be the maximum. Let's look at it graphically, just to confirm. If I bring up the graph of this function, here we go. So this is our product function, so this is our value of x, and this is our value for p, the product, and we can see that at this point right here, the slope of the tangent line is 0. And if we extrapolate that down to the axis, this is right in the middle. So 7.5 for the value for x here. And the product that leads to that maximum, we extrapolate that over to the product a vertical axis, is 56.25. And just to confirm that it is a maximum, in our region, which is the positive x, positive y uh, region here, um, we have one critical point, which is a maximum. It's concave down, which means it's a maximum. The slope of the lines to the left are positive. The slope of the lines to the curve on the right side are negative. So that is indeed a maximum. Okay, there you go. We started our exploration of optimization. We can see our answer logically, graphically, and also using calculus here to confirm. There you go.